Today we're going to be working on solving uh, polynomials or solving for the roots of polynomials using a graph and using the factoring technique. We're going to be working on uh, using the zero product property in finding the solutions or the roots of a polynomial and uh, the first method that we're going to use is finding the roots using a graph. Now in this particular example we are looking at the graph of a certain polynomial and you will notice that the polynomial or the graph of the function is intersecting the x-axis three times and uh, the points of intersection of the graph along the x-axis is at x equal to negative 2, x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 1. Now the points of intersections of uh, the function or the graph along the x-axis are what we call as the roots or the zeros or the solutions of a polynomial. So in this particular polynomial, we have three roots, which are negative 2, 0, and 1. Now, not all polynomials will look exactly the same, just like the examples that I'm giving you right now. Sometimes we'll have polynomials similar to these ones. So these examples are parabolas or the graph of a quadratic equation, and you will notice that the three polynomials or the three parabolas that we have are somehow touching the x-axis in several ways. Now for problem number one, or for the first graph, you will notice that the parabola that is opening upward is not touching the x-axis. So when that happens, that means that our polynomial or our function, or in this case, the graphic or the quadratic equation has no solution because graphically we're not seeing a point of intersection of the parabola on the x-axis. Now for Graph number two, the middle graph, you will notice that we have one point of intersection of the parabola along the x-axis and the vertex is touching the x-axis once. So when this happens, we can have one solution of this particular polynomial or a quadratic equation. That is why on the third example, you will see that the graph has two points of intersection of uh, the graph along the x-axis which means we have two solutions so when we are working with a graph and we're finding the roots of the graph all we have to do is to count the number of intersections of that particular graph along the x-axis to find the solutions or the roots or the zeros of a polynomial now the problem is not all polynomials are represented or represented by a graph sometimes you are given a uh, function or set of factored form of the polynomials to find the roots of a given polynomial. So when that happens, we're going to be using an algebra technique to be able to find the roots of a polynomial. And for today, we're going to be using the zero product property to find the roots of a polynomial algebraically. So in this particular property, it's just simply telling us that if we have two factors of a certain polynomials which is equal to zero to find the points of intersections or the solution of the polynomial all we have to do is to separate the factors and equate it to zero so if we have factored form of polynomial which is x plus 3 and 2x plus 4 if we're going to use the zero product property for this polynomial all we have to do is to separate the two factors and equate it both to zero so we have x plus 3 is equal to zero and 2x plus 4 is equal to zero now let's have an example on how to find the root of a polynomial using the zero product property. In this example, we have x minus 3 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. So notice that this polynomial is in factored form. So if it's in factored form, all we have to do is to use the zero product property and equate the first factor and the second factor to 0 and solve for x. So for the first set of equation, we have x minus 3 is equal to 0. So if we, sub if we add 3 on both sides, we'll be able to solve for the solution of this equation. So we have x is equal to 3, which is one of the solutions or one of the points of intersection of this polynomial along the x-axis. Now for the second root, all we have to do is to subtract 5 on both sides and we'll have x is equal to negative 5. Now in this particular polynomial, we know that we have two solutions or two roots or two points of intersection 
of the graph along the x axis which is going to be at x equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 5. Now to put it in perspective since we are given the factored form of the polynomial x minus 3 and x plus 5 if we change this into standard form or FOIL our polynomial will be able to produce a quadratic equation at x squared plus 2x minus 15. And if we're going to graph this polynomial or quadratic equation, we know that this is a graph of a parabola opening upwards. And if we're going to sketch the graph of this polynomial or a quick sketch of this graph, we know that the graph of this parabola opening upwards will cross or intersect the x-axis at negative 5 and at 3. So if we're going to sketch a quick graph of this parabola, it's a parabola opening upwards, which will intersect at negative 5 and 3. So that is how or why we're looking for the solution of a polynomial using the zero product property. So on our next examples, we have problem number one, which is 2x minus 4 times x minus 1 and x plus 4. And the other one is at x times x minus 9. So since we already have the factored form of the polynomial and not the standard form of the polynomial, using the zero product property is pretty simple. So we're going to separate each factor and equate it to zero, and then we're going to solve for x. Now for the first set, we have 2x minus 4 is equal to zero. So to solve for that particular equation, we'll use two steps. So we're going to do a little bit of mental mathematics to find the value of x. So we know that the first step that we're going to do is to add 4 on both sides and then divide both sides by 2, giving us x is equal to 4 all over 2. So for the first root of our polynomial, we'll have x is equal to 1 half. And for the second root, we'll have x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 4 for the third root. So in solving for the roots of the polynomial, it's important that you uh, solve some problems uh, mentally to be able to uh, challenge yourself in solving mathematics in your head. So for problem number two, since we have x times x minus 9, it's also in factored form, so we will use the zero product property and separate the two factors into two equations. So we'll have x is equal to zero and x minus nine is equal to zero. So the two roots that we have will be x equals zero and x equal to nine. So notice that the two examples that we have are easy to uh, solve because the polynomials are already in factored form. Now for the next example, problem number three, Notice that we have 3x squared plus 9x is equal to 0. And this is certainly not in the factored form of the polynomial. So in this particular case, we need to use two steps to be able to find the roots of the polynomial. The first step is to factor the polynomial. And the second step is to use the zero product proper property to find the roots of this polynomial. So when this case happens, you need to know the rules in factoring um, polynomials to be able to proceed to uh, ZPP. Now, for um, today, we're going to be using uh, some factoring techniques to be able to uh, um, not limit ourselves in just seeing the graph and seeing the factored form of the polynomial to solve for x. So we're going to be working on the first factoring technique that we're going to use today, which is the difference of two squares. Now, the difference of two square is a polynomial or this particular case of polynomial wherein if you have the square of a squared minus b squared you can separate this polynomial into a minus b times a plus b so if we have this particular pattern in our polynomial we can easily separate it into two factors using this formula so in this example we have three sets of polynomials that's not in factored form but falls under the difference of two squares pattern or category. So if we have 16 minus x squared, notice that 16 is a perfect square and x squared is also square so we can use this formula in separating the polynomial. So 16, the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of x squared is x. So the factored form of 16 minus x squared will be 4 plus x times 4 minus x. So this particular technique will only work when your polynomials are considered to be difference of two squares. And number two is also another example of difference of two squares. So we can separate this polynomial into m plus 9 and m minus 9. And for the third problem, 
we have 9y squared minus 4x squared. So notice that the variables have a coefficient right now that are both perfect squares. So we can still apply the same formula in separating the polynomial. So we'll have 3y minus 2 times 3y plus 2 as the factored form of this polynomial. So this is how we use the difference of two squares technique in factoring certain polynomials. So if we're going to solve for the solutions or the zeros or the roots of x squared minus 36 is equal to 0, all we need to do is to factor this out using the factoring technique that we used a while ago. So by using the difference of two squares, we'll be able to separate x squared minus 36 into x plus 6 times x minus 6. And now that we are equating it to 0, we'll be able to use the zero product property and separate the two factors so we can solve for the roots of the polynomial. So we have x plus 6 is equal to 0 and x minus 6 is equal to 0. So for the set, first set, all we have to do is subtract 6 on both sides. So we'll have x is equal to negative 6. And on the second set, we'll have to add 6 on both sides. So we'll end up with two roots of the polynomial and they are negative 6 and positive 6. So the two points of intersection of the polynomial without even seeing the graph is going to go at negative 6 and positive 6. So this is how we use this factoring technique to find the roots of a polynomial. Now, not all polynomials will have the same pattern, unfortunately. So we need to learn more techniques to be able to understand some patterns that we could work on to find the factored form of the polynomial. And the second set of polynomial that we're going to factor uses the greatest common factor technique in finding the factored form of the polynomial. Say for example, just like the example that I have given you a while ago, we use 3x squared plus 9x is equal to 0. And as I have mentioned, we need to factor this out and then use the zero product property to find the roots of the polynomial. Now obviously, 3x squared plus 9x is not difference of two squares. So by using a different technique, we'll be able to factor this out. And by using the greatest common factor for 3x squared plus 9x, we know that the greatest common factor of 3x squared and 9x, 9x would be 3x. So by reversing the uh, distributive property, so all you have to do is to think of the reverse of the distributive property to be able to factor out 3x squared plus 9x by 3x. So by dividing 3x squared plus 3x and 9x by 3x, we'll be able to have 3x parentheses x plus 9. So this is now the factored form of our polynomial using the GCF technique. And we know that we factored it correctly because 3x times x is equal to 3x squared and 3x times 9 is equal to 9x. So now that we have the factored form of the polynomial, we can now use ZPP or the zero product property to separate the factors and find the roots of the polynomial. So for this first set of polynomial, we're going to be dividing 3 on both sides to have x by itself. And for the second set, we'll be subtracting 9 on both sides. So we still have two roots of this polynomial and they are 0 and negative 9. So this is how we use the GCF technique in finding the roots of the polynomial. So say we have two or several um, polynomials that we need to solve. So one thing that you need to remember about solving polynomials using the factoring technique is you need to first know or recognize the pattern that you will be using to be able to separate the polynomial. Just like problem number one, we know that 9x squared minus 1 can be simplified using the difference of two squares because we are recognizing that particular pattern in our problem. Since 9 is a perfect square and 1 is a perfect square, we can separate the polynomial into 3x plus 1 and 3x minus 1 because this is a special case of a polynomial which we can factor out by separating it this way. So now that we have the factored form of the polynomial, Using the zero product property, we'll have two sets of equation which we are going to solve. And once again, let's use mental mathematics to solve for the x. So for the first set, we need to subtract 1 on both sides, giving us 3x is equal to 1, and divide both sides by 3, so we'll have x is equal to negative 1 third. And for the second set, 
we'll have 3x minus 1, so that means add 1 on both sides and divide 3 on both sides, and we'll have x is equal to 1 third. So the two solutions of this polynomial will be negative 1 over 3 and 1 over 3 using the difference of two squares technique. Now for problem number two, we know that we're not going to use the difference of two squares technique because 5 is not a perfect square. So what we can do is find the greatest common factor between 5x squared and 25x and we know that 5x is the greatest common factor of the two polynomials. So by reversing the distributive property or dividing each term by the greatest common factor, we'll end up with 5x times x plus 5. So now that we have the factors of the polynomial, we're going to use the zero product property and set the two factors into zero. So we have 5x is equal to zero and x minus 5 is equal to zero, giving us two sets of factors or two sets of solutions, which will be x is equal to zero and x is equal to 5. And for problem number 3, we have 3x cubed minus 27x is equal to 0. Now, looking at the polynomial, we know that this is not a difference of two squares because 3 and 27 are both not a perfect square. So we're going to use the greatest common factor, and the greatest common factor here is 3x. So if we undo the distributive or we use the reverse distributive property and dividing each term by 3x, we'll end up with 3x times x squared minus 9. Now, this one is a special case of a polynomial because you will notice that one of the factors of this polynomial can still be factored out using a different technique. So by using the difference of two squares, because x squared minus 9 falls under that category, we can still separate this factor of function into x minus 3 and x plus 3. So sometimes we need to use two or more factoring techniques to be able to completely factored out some polynomials. And it's true for problem number three. We use two factoring techniques to find the solutions of the polynomial. And by using the zero product property, we'll separate each factor into three equations. So now we have 3x is equal to zero, x minus three is equal to zero, and x plus three is equal to zero. And using mental mathematics, we know that we have x is equal to zero and x is equal to three, and x equal to negative 3 as the roots or the solutions or the zeros or the point of intersection of the graph along the x-axis. And this is how we solve for the roots of a polynomial using factoring.